Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to take this opportunity to condemn the terrorist attack. It is not justified by anything in the Islamic religion and I totally condemn it 100% without any reservation. This idea that you have moderate Muslims and you have radical Muslims is complete nonsense. Allahu Akbar! I have the answer to the war on terror. See, Jesus put himself on the cross so I wouldn't have to shed my own blood. I've got one that can see. It's time for Radical Truth with Tony Gurley. What do you need to know about interfaith dialogues? What is the deception behind these events? Who is using them to their advantage here in the West? What is a fairly recent example of one of these events and what happened? And also, what are some great resources to prepare you for when these events take place in your area? If nothing else, if you're just going to show up and listen and then ask questions during the Q&A maybe. But also, what are resources that can better prepare you to reach Muslims yourself? How to clearly present the gospel? How to defend the historic Christian faith when necessary? And also even let a Muslim know why Islam is false using objective evidence, not personal opinion. This is Radical Truth, and believe it or not, we are going to cover all of that and more in this episode. Now, in a formal debate, it is clearly advertised up front that the two opponents, or sometimes it's two people versus two people, three versus three, etc., but usually one-on-one, -on -one, they have a differing view on a particular topic and they have a different answer on a particular question. You'll notice that many debates are asking a question, or that's the title of the debate. And the two people will present whatever evidence they have on why they think they are right. And it's up to the audience to decide who had the more evidence, who had better evidence, who presented a better case for their view. But there's no question that the participants in the formal debate disagree about what they're discussing. Now, in interfaith dialogue, it's not the disagreements that are highlighted and letting people know, well, I disagree with this person and this is why. In an interfaith dialogue, they're focused on the similarities. So when it comes to our eternal salvation and what is actually true, what happens after we die, who is God, what does God require of us, who is Jesus, etc., you know, you don't really realize how different these man-made religions are and the theological cults, etc. Whenever you have a debate where they're just talking about the similarities, because if you ask these different groups, say you ask a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, a Mormon, a Jehovah's Witness, hey, do you all believe in God? They're all going to say yes. So people commonly conclude, oh, well, they're pretty much fundamentally the same. They pretty much believe the same stuff but they're just superficially different. That's why this person calls himself a Christian. That's why this person calls himself a Muslim or a Mormon, etc. But again, it's not the similarities, it's the differences that matter, especially when it comes to our eternal salvation. And that's why I've said many times before, you have to ask the question, who is God? Not just do you believe in God, but who is God? Who is Jesus? Because those answers that you get to those questions will let you know right away that it's logically impossible for all these groups to be right. It's logically impossible for all of them to be, to be correct. Either everyone's wrong or if one is true, the contradictory ones are automatically false. And if Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, and then other man-made religions and theological cults out there say, oh, well, here's another way, well, then they're wrong, or Jesus is wrong, one of the two. But of course, where does all the evidence point? It points to the truthfulness of Christianity. So who is setting up these interfaith dialogues? It is the Islamists at least 95% of the time, if not more. I mean, some people say 100% of the time, because you have to ask, what, what does a Jew or Christian in the West have to gain by setting up an event and inviting a Muslim to talk about what we have in common. It's the Islamists who are setting up these events. 
And they're doing it in order to gain power in the West. And they're not presenting Islam according to Muhammad at these events. They're trying to let you know, hey, we believe in God too. We believe in Jesus too. Oh, we believe in Abraham. He was a prophet and all these other people were prophets. Yeah, we believe a lot of the same stuff. And they're relying upon the ignorance or the uneducation of particular people who don't know what questions to ask or don't realize uh, it's the differences that matter, not the similarities. So we need to be prepared to engage these events, to show up as a member in the audience, to ask questions during Q&A, and again, most importantly, just know the deception behind them. It's the Islamists who are setting them up. It's the Islamists who have something to gain. You don't see posters or you don't even hear of interfaith events taking place in Saudi Arabia and in Iran and in any country where it's already under Islamic law or the Muslims are the majority or are already in power. It's in the West where they're trying to gain power that the Islamists are setting up interfaith events to let people know how much Islam has in common with Judaism and Christianity. And when you show up to these events, again, it's not going to be usually a, a Christian who knows solid Christian theology and is there to present that, and then a conservative Jew. It's usually a liberal Jew, and again, the pastor of like a Unitarian Universalist church who is the Christian, quote-unquote, or a Christian pastor, and then you have a Muslim. And again, they're not presenting Islam according to Muhammad. They're presenting a watered-down, sugar-coated Walt Disney version of Islam to appeal to people in the West in order to invite people to Islam. It's pretty much a dawah tactic, which is the Islamic equivalent to evangelism, even though there's no good news in Islam. It's really just calling people to Islam and giving enough information that will appeal to people. Now... Uh, who controls these dialogues? That's another important question to ask. It is the Muslims, once again. It's the Islamists who let the Jew and the Christian, quote-unquote, and whoever else is involved in the event, they will let them know up front, okay, th there is no critiquing Islam allowed. No, You're not allowed to say anything bad about Islam. Uh, you know, We're focusing on what we have in common and how we should just be focused on dialogue. Now, we do need to have dialogue with all non-Christians. We need to have dialogue with Muslims. So, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't have dialogue at all and debate is the only thing you should do because many Christians aren't prepared to be in a formal debate with a Muslim. A lot of Christians aren't prepared to even be in an interfaith dialogue or after watching this show, you probably don't even have a, uh, any desire to be involved in one because you know it's not for your advantage. It's, it's going to do nothing for you. All it's going to do is attempt to convince the uneducated citizens that Islam has so much in common with Juda Judaism and Christianity. So who sets them up? It's the Islamists. Who will gain? It's the Islamists. And who controls the dialogue? It is the Islamists. And there's an, a two-hour show that is available on the Radical Truth YouTube channel, also on the BitChute channel. That is B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E dot com forward slash Tony Grillet, and it's called The Deception of Interfaith Dialogues. This is a two-hour show that featured me, that featured Joe Carey, the founder of Radical Truth, who went home to be with the Lord a couple of years ago. It also featured Dr. J. Smith, who has debated Muslims at Speaker's Corner in London for many years. He's in the United States now and traveling extensively to equip people to reach Muslims with the gospel and how to, to be involved in not only apologetics, but polemics. We're going to get more to that, into that. And also, it featured Usama Dak Duke, a great, or Dak, a lot of people say Usama Dak Dok, a great Christian brother who was born and raised in Egypt and has firsthand experience of growing up around Muslims under a country that has a heavy Islamic influence. Now, he, of course, is here in America now as well, and he has his own ministry equipping people, and he's debating a lot of different people, debating a lot of Muslims, etc. Now, this show is a great one to share with people because not only do all of us talk about uh, our take on interfaith dialogues and the pros and the cons, 
but it, you'll notice that there's almost like a, a, a semi a disagreement or debate between uh, the, the four of us, or at least a couple of us, in, in this show as well. So it's a great show to watch to get a lot of info on interfaith dialogues and the deception behind them. And again, that's available on the Radical Truth YouTube channel and also the BitChute channel as well. Now, what I want to encourage everyone to do, if you've not done so yet, is go to these different platforms and subscribe to Radical Truth. Obviously, our main website is RadicalTruth.net. You can go there, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter, but also on YouTube. As you can see here, if you're watching the video episode, if not, if you're listening to the podcast, we thank God for you, and we're so glad. Folks, if you're not aware, our podcast listening audience has doubled just in the last month. A lot of people are tuning in. So go to YouTube and subscribe to Radical Truth there. Again, that's for videos, not just these these episodes, but we have a lot of other videos there as well. In iTunes or Apple Podcasts, subscribe to Radical Truth. On BitChute, that you'll find it under uh, Tony Grulay. And also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, make sure that you like and or follow Radical Truth 777. Now, when we come back, we are going to be getting into a specific event that happened fairly recently and, and what happened to that event, who was involved in it, and we're also going to be getting to those resources as well that will better equip you to not only ask great questions at these events, if they do take place in your area, but also how to ask better questions yourself when you're just talking with a Muslim one-on-one, -on -one, because that is going to happen much more often than even one of these events will. So stay right where you are. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Joe Carey with Radical Truth Ministry, helping Christians reach Muslims with the gospel. Islam teaches that nobody can be sure of their salvation and make it into heaven except those who sacrifice their life as a martyr in an act of jihad. Muhammad did not even know what Allah would do with him. He had no assurance of his personal salvation. Yet Islam also teaches that Jesus is in heaven with God at this very moment. Yet Jesus was not martyred in an act of jihad. Indeed, Muslims do not even believe Jesus was crucified, so they cannot even possibly make the argument that Jesus was also a martyr and thus given entrance into heaven. So how is it that Jesus is with God? Muhammad isn't. No Muslim can make that claim with any certainty. But the Quran affirms that Jesus is with God. God took Jesus up to himself. Help your Muslim friends understand the significance of who Jesus was and what he's done for them by sharing this little insight. You can find more about sharing with Muslims at our website at RadicalTruth.net. I'm Joe Carey for Radical Truth Ministry. Hello, everyone. This is Tony Grillet, Vice President, Speaker, and Trainer at Radical Truth. Our mission is to equip the body of Christ with the training necessary to effectively engage Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Radical Truth, we proclaim truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. Whether it's through a church sermon, individual talk, weekend seminar, or in-depth training course, we inform, educate, and equip people in the areas of evangelism, apologetics, and Islam. We also reach many people online via our website and social media pages, and through educational videos as well. Last but not least, as you can see, I'm here in the studio where we record our podcast and TV show. That allows us to share the gospel and inform, educate, and equip people on a global scale. Rather than seeing Muslims as our enemies, we see them as people made in the image of God, whom Jesus Christ died for. However, Muslims have a false view of God, a false view of Jesus, and they don't know or understand the gospel. Therefore, we see all Muslims as victims of the lie of Islam. And as Christians, we're the only ones who can bring them the message that will set them free. I want to personally ask you to partner with me and Radical Truth to support our work. You can do so by doing two things. First, regularly pray for our ministry as we continue to reach the lost and equip the found. Pray that God would give us wisdom in all that we do, and that He would bless our efforts for His glory. Also, pray for the salvation of 1.6 billion Muslims, the largest unreached people group in the world. The second thing you can do is give regular financial gifts. As a 501c3 Christian ministry, we depend upon God to provide our monthly financial support. And He provides through people like you who realize the need for this vital work. Your financial gifts allow us to continue our full-time effort to proclaim truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. To donate, simply visit RadicalTruth.net. 
Thank you so much for your prayers and financial support. This is Tony Gurley with Radical Truth. First John 5.13, these things have been written that you may know that you have eternal life. We have the answer Muslims are looking for. Why are Muslims here in our land today? Because God wants to get them saved. We didn't go to them, so God brought them over here to us. This is Radical Truth with Tony Gurley. Before the break, we talked about the distinctions between interfaith dialogues and formal debates. Who sets them up, who will gain, and who controls the dialogue? And not surprisingly, Islamists is the answer to every one of those questions. Also, we talked about the interfaith, the deception of interfaith dialogue show that we did a couple of years ago. And again, that was featuring myself and Joe Carey, the founder of Radical Truth, as well as some other great brothers in the Lord. And a fairly recent event that took place here in America, it happened March 5th of 2020. And it happened in North Carolina. The headline of the news story when it came out was J.D. Greer Omar Suleiman to discuss Christian Muslim relations at North Carolina College. The, this event happened on March 5th, 2020. If you go to the Radical Truth Facebook page, and here is a tip for a lot of people too who want to look to and find old stories or older stories, is when you go to the Radical Truth Facebook page on the left-hand side, click on photos, and you'll notice that just about every single one of our posts has a photo included with it. So you can just scroll down and look at different photos, whichever one you click on, it'll pull up that post in the, in the commentary with it, any news links along with it, etc. Now, this post was made on March 4th, 2020, the day before the event, and it gave a number of links letting people know about Suleiman and what he's been involved in, things that he has said in the past, and you can get all of the specific links in that info, again, by going to the Radical Truth Facebook page. So what the audience sees, especially if no one knows who either one of these people are, J.D. Greer is a pastor. He's, he's the author of at least a few books, if not a handful or two handfuls, and he is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Omar Suleiman is someone who has been in the news a, a lot if, if you're looking for the news stories. And in that Facebook post, you will see headlines such as these. Israel hating, gay bashing, sexist imam gives invocation to U.S. House. And it says, Omar Suleiman is a conservative imam who has a history of spewing hatred toward Israel and who holds views about gays and women that would spark outrage on the left if they came from a preacher of any other faith. Another news headline, now that America hating Democrats control Congress, Muslim clergy are being asked to give opening prayers. Congressional invocation imam, deceitful quote unquote Jews are apes and pigs. And then it says straight from the Quran, Imam Omar Suleiman's virulent canonical Islamic Jew hatred was elaborated in copious, ugly detail during a five-part, nearly six-hour 2012 lecture series called Lost Chronicles of Beni Israel. And Democrats succumb to Islamist influence. Also, Omar Suleiman is not a progressive and in that, you'll see different headlines with commentary underneath them of advocacy for theocracy, defense of Hadood punishments. This is referring to Islamic law, Sharia, hateful homophobia, retrograde attitudes towards women and sex, other joyless, austere religious social conservatism, anti-Zionist hatred and conspiracy, and Anwar al-Awlaki was our beloved imam, quote-unquote, and so beloved to our community. Again, those are the things talked about in this particular article, and all of them are linked in that March 4th, 2020 Facebook post about this event. Now, again, it took place the very next day on March 5th, and this wasn't advertised, as far as I know, as an interfaith dialogue, quote-unquote, using those specific words. However, it also was not a formal debate. 
So you decide which of those uh, categories it should fall under. But if you go and watch this dialogue, quote unquote, you will notice a number of things. And I, and I made a list. I made uh, this list, which I'm going to share with you right now. When I watched it, this is what I wrote down on both sides. So starting with J.D. Greer, he made a point about loving your Muslim neighbor. That is great. He also focused on the gospel, which of course is what's most important. He didn't shy away from the gospel. He clearly shared it. He did a good job explaining the misconceptions between church and state as well. You know, I don't know why, but many uh, atheists, liberals, etc., will commonly state the separation between church and state as if atheists who are the ones who came up with it. You ever notice that? The separation in church and, uh, in church and state was created by the founders of our country, who, if you haven't watched the episode on America's founders, you need to go do that because you will realize that they were theists, not atheists and not even deists. They were theists, and they're the ones who came up with the separation between church and state. So again, many liberals uh, bring this topic up like atheists created it when they didn't at all. It's Christians who wanted to make sure that the state did not influence the church. However, the church should be influencing the state and the culture. So that's a whole nother topic. But J.D. Greer did make a good distinction between church and and state. He also talked about the teachings of Jesus, which of course was great. And he talked about the sinfulness of man, which people need to understand because only when you realize the bad news that we are sinners in the hands of an angry God, a famous sermon title by Jonathan Edwards, the good news makes sense. That God is just, he will punish lawbreakers, but the same God who was just and perfect and holy and will punish sin is also rich in mercy. And he's shown his grace by giving us what we don't deserve. And one, the, ma- the main thing, <laughs> was his son, the eternal son of God who took on human flesh. His name was Jesus. He died on the cross. He died a guilty man's death, and he rose in glory three days later. And if we repent and put our trust in him, that is when we can have reconciliation to the God of the universe, and we can receive what we don't deserve, which is eternal life and, of course, heaven. Now, he also articulated the gospel uh, greatly. So, we need to give him props for all these things. And of course, he shared the gospel itself. So these are all positive things. And these are the things that you will notice that came most from J.D. Greer. Now, when it comes to uh, Omar Suleiman, no surprise, here are some of the key terms that were brought up in his portion of the dialogue. Social justice, fascism, far right, talked about uh, India and China, talked about refugees and migrants, hate, fear, bigotry, xenophobia, immigration, Islamophobia. He talked about Muhammad being a mercy to mankind, if you believe that. Uh, Muslims are victims, of course. And he took five seconds to acknowledge the fact that there are uh, G- that the, there are Jews and Christians facing persecution. You know, just kind of glossed over it real quick. Talked about surveillance of Muslims and attacking Muslim countries. Uh, was dependent upon people's ignorance of Islam and the life of Muhammad in order for his message to sound good, quote unquote. That's a comment that I wrote down there. So no surprise. And again, if, if you have already read those news stories about Suleiman, then you can tell, you know, no surprise, an Islamist will always put on their best face to appeal to the audience in these different dialogues that take place. So that is a dialogue that you can go and watch. The video should be available on YouTube. Again, those are just my comments on it and what I noticed, and no surprise. Again, it was not a formal debate, but uh, good job to Pastor J.D. Greer, who again is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention as well, because he clearly shared the gospel and he focused on what he should have been focused on. Now, what are some resources that can better prepare you for all of this? Number one, as I mentioned before, the show, The Deception of Interfaith Dialogues, and again, in that show, there's almost like a, a, a mini debate, it seemed, between 
uh, myself, Joe Carey, and and Dr. Jay Smith when he first came on because he had listened to a lot of things that we said. And he, so anyway, you gotta you just gotta watch it to to get all the info there and and, and notice well, notice what I'm talking about. But the show itself has a lot of information for you, uh, not only in what you should know if you attend one of these events as a uh, audience member, but also. Uh, how you should be prepared to bring up questions during the Q&A as well to let people know. And if not, if the differences haven't been talked about, you can actually do that during the Q&A. Now, another thing, another show you should check out, and it's available on the BitChute channel, is Typical Muslim Fallacies. And this is a show that I did with Dr. Jay Smith talking about, uh, I think, 11 or 12 different fallacies that he has noticed over his many years, decades of debating Muslims. And that is what that show is about. So a great show to watch. Also, of course, our 20-hour Understanding Islam Apologetics to Islam training series. It's available on YouTube for free. However, a lot of people say, hey, uh, that's great, and I, I'll watch them when I can, but I also want a hard copy of this, either to give to someone who's not tech-savvy or I just want to have a hard copy of it in general so I can watch it whenever I want, even without internet and so on. So we have this five DVD set, and it is it is this 20-hour series. It's five discs, including a resource CD for your computer, which has a ton of out-of-print old books on Islam and Christianity, a ton of great resources. So we have a $25 suggested donation, and we will mail this DVD set to you anywhere in the United States. And if you want something even smaller, we have the official Radical Truth flash drive. It has our website on one side, has our logo on the other side. And this has that 20-hour series on it, as well as the resource disk full of information. That information is on this flash drive as well. Again, $25 suggested donation, and we'll email it, to, or not, yeah, we will mail it to you in the mail. It can include shipping and handling if you are anywhere in the United States. But again, the 20-hour series focuses on defending the Christian faith and polemics to Islam as well. Another series you need to check out is Islam, the Historical Critique Series. This is a seven-part, eight-hour series I did with Dr. Jay Smith. It's available on the BitChute channel. And here are the topics. Why are there two compilations of the Quran? What has happened to the nine earliest Quranic manuscripts? Why are there four Islamic Qiblas? This is talking about the direction of prayer. Why is What is the Andalusian problem that has to do with Islamic Spain? The hidden Islamic slave trade and colorism? Why we found 31 different Qurans? The many historical problems with Islam. These are the topics that are in that series. Just go to the BitChute channel. You'll notice at the top it says Tony Grulay and Radical Truth. Underneath that, in smaller font, it says it again. Click the one underneath because this will take you to the page where it has the playlists. And that is where you will find that playlist as well as others. Of course, folks, the gospel is the main goal here. We need to be able to defend Christianity. We need to be able to critique Islam when necessary. That is where apologetics and polemics do come in. But again, the main focus is the gospel. That is what we all need to be sharing with people around us, and that includes all Muslims. Go out and share your faith with people around you, and we'll see you next time on Radical Truth.